we're butting up against September here. I'm well aware that summer is in decline. These are the final vestiges of summer. But come on, this is taking the piss a little bit. 10 degrees. <laughs> 10 degrees. I've got full finger gloves on. I've got a base layer, a gilet. Oh, knee warmers. 10 degrees, people. And I'm a little soft. My life on two wheels action shot. It's a long weekend. Labor Day long weekend in Canada. A big hello to my other laborers who are also enjoying Labor Day south of the border. Maybe it's a bank holiday in the UK. Enjoy, get out on your bike. Enjoy it while it lasts. Dare I say it, winter is coming. Hooking up with a guy today. Not like that, but like that. Been talking about this for a little while. His name is Master Fu. I'm gonna go for a noodle. Unpack his story a little bit. He's an interesting cat. Let's find out more about Master Fu. So those layers didn't last very long. 20 minutes into the ride or so, started to warm up. As the temperatures start to rise, it's just a very slow incremental temperature rise at this time of the year, as you well know. This is the last uh, Friday. I typically take Fridays off work um, for the month of August, maybe a little bit longer, uh, just to enjoy the uh, cycling season. I've talked about this before. It's the cycling season, uh, outdoor road cycling season and or gravel can be somewhat truncated here in the frozen north. So typically, uh, generously, April, early May through to Ooh, mid-November, that's generous. So try to cram in as much cycling as I can during those months. Um, so this is the last one before I have to go back to the grind. Fall time, people. Yeah. Anyways, Master Fu is about to appear. Hey, good morning, Matt. So good to see you. Look at this. Awesome, man. Awesome. It's like you called me in the morning and said, hey, put your wheelers kit on. Yeah, that's right. I'm good. How are you? Good. You know that we're going up like a 2 3 K per hour, right? <laughs> Be patient with me. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I brought the camera to slow me down. <laughs> this is my third time this year for the park. That's it? That's it. Why? Because, you know, going downhill, I love it. Going uphill there, I'm telling you, getting older, I gotta watch my heart rate. Okay. So, and comfort, comfort ride is, I'm good. Yeah, let's hit. So if you don't see him again. No, it, you will. <laughs> it's because he died halfway through the ride. <laughs> and I saw people die in the park. And then that'll be a different topic of a video. Right. How yes. to resuscitate an old friend. And no, by friend, no I mean. Kiss. No kissing. No, no mouth to mouth no is going to be happening. Just step on me. Yes, yeah. Jump on my chest. So. Uh, I've told the viewers a little yes. bit about you, Ooh. but what I find most interesting about you, there's many things, yeah. but you, is how you got into cycling. Because you are actually an accomplished athlete, but in a totally different sport. Was it Kung Fu or something? Like what? Thanks, Matt. <laughs> I want to tell you something. Go ahead. I broke, I had my meniscus removed because it was damaged during the competition I was training. And then uh, the doctor told me that I cannot do any sports with impact. No running, no this, no that, no tennis, and I used to love that stuff. And uh, so I've been asking around, what's best for me for, for my knee and for my cardio, because I'm really worried about my cardio, because I'm just still competing at that time. So one of these guys, and Ken, obviously from Florida Fina, they said, do cycling, no impact. Cycling, okay, fine. So the only thing that I know to buy a bike at that point is Canadian Tire. So Canadian Tire, you can't go to buy a bike Canadian Tire. So what's the budget? 500 bucks. 500 bucks? That's not a bike. He says handlebar is 250. His bottle, bottle cage is $100 each. His paddle is at 350. I said, oh my God. 
<laughs> okay. Anyway, cut the story short. I got my steel bike, came down from Fortune Hill. I said, now I can do anything. Came down, I almost T-boned a van. And I scared the hell out of me. And I went that day. So when day, I said, Ken, can you take a look at my bike? He said, throw that bike in the garbage. He doesn't even want to look at it. So I went to the bike shop. I have to mortgage my wife and I bought my first bike. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I started about 18 years ago. And what it's was, amazing. You skipped the part of the sport that you're so proficient in. It wasn't Kung Fu. I was. I am a Taekwondo instructor for the last almost 41 years now in Elmer. But you're more than that. You're more than an instructor. Like you are you almost an Olympian, right? <laughs> Thanks, Matt. I know that you love me there. <laughs> but I tell you, it was damn close. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just. Uh, I was a national coach for 12 years and compete uh, in the in the world levels. I came back number two in the world type of things. And my uh, weight categories, of course, uh, won many championships and travel all over, almost all over the world. But lots of places anyway. Not yeah. all over the world, but lots of places. I keep myself with these questions in my head. I said, Why do I like cycling so much? I just can't find a word to express myself. I finally discovered his freedom. That is the word for me. Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful moment shared with this guy. Yay. <laughs> Master Fu. <laughs> All right, while we're talking about cycling, let's, uh, let's actually do some. 52 kilometers done. Yay! He made it. Now, there were some weird sounds coming from behind me. Um, awesome ride. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, right. And you didn't die. No, I survived. Survived for the old man. You were worried at the beginning, but uh, things worked out. I was worried out. because when I see you there, that's it. The killer. Gotta drop the hammer on the old guy. Awesome Sometimes right. you're the nail. Awesome right. Sometimes you're the hammer. Okay guys, that's a wrap for this week. Always good to catch up with old friends. I don't ride with Master Fu or William, if you were wondering what his first name was. I don't ride with him very often. I think it's kind of like once or twice a year. But uh, like I said, always good to catch up and uh, see what's new and exciting in his life. Uh, a couple of things to point out. You know, he talked a little bit about getting older. He's 68. I think he's okay with me sharing that information with you. Uh, but he is concerned about his heart rate a little bit, especially on the climbs. He kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, so I was, uh, I took it easy on him for sure, um, but he, he's fine. He doesn't have any underlying heart issues, but I think that can kind of play on your head a little bit, especially as you start to become a, an older cyclist. Anyways, he's in amazing shape. He underplayed his proficiency in Taekwondo a little bit. He really was uh, fairly accomplished and uh, the successes did take him all around the world and he met some incredible people and uh, competed at a very, very high level. So he's an interesting cat and uh, if you ever get into a fight, uh, he's someone you want uh, in your corner for sure. Yeah, so that's it for this week. I need to start rummaging around in the cycling gear closet and find my winter stuff because uh, the temperatures have really um, started to plummet. It's a little frosty first thing in the morning. Um, but the plan is to head out with Linda one of these days and uh, do a quick noodle. So maybe I'll capture that for the vlog. Have a great week. Have a great Labor Day long weekend slash bank holiday weekend. And uh, I'll see you next week. Take care.